All right, today we're reviewing a historic Springer. It's been a top choice for FT competition for years. I saw quite a few at the Pyramid Air Cup. And this is the Air Arms TX200 MK3 Ultimate Springer Laminate. And these are not cheap. This will cost you as much as a fine PCP. The good news is that they just released two laminate versions. You can get the Hunter, which has basically a 13 inch barrel or the Ultimate Springer, which has a 16 inch barrel. And although it doesn't look like it, these are actually shredded barrels, so you have a little bit of sound suppression in there. This is basically a super accurate spring gun that's also super smooth. I asked ChatGPT about the TX200. It says it's a well-regarded spring piston air rifle that has gained popularity among enthusiasts, including those involved in field target competitions. It says the TX200 is known for its underlever design and smooth shooting cycle. Its consistent performance and reliability make it a competitive choice for shooters in various air gun disciplines, including field target. For more information on the laminate version of the Air Arms TX200 MK3, shoot on over to pyramidair.com. There will be a link in the description. This modern version has a bunch of safeties built in. This stock is super awesome. It's 3D adjustable, plus it has your cheek piece. The cheek piece actually has vertical, lateral, tilt and swivel adjustments so the stock is really what sets apart these more expensive tx200s you can get the same gun for nearly half the price at pyramid air if you're willing to go with just a plain beach stock which is also beautiful or i believe they also have a non-adjustable walnut stock but that's the same exact tx200 part of their accuracy is due to the lothar walther match grade barrel these are powerful too the 16-inch barrel version that we're looking at today is putting out 15 foot-pounds in 177. That's going to get your 177 caliber pellet going 930 feet per second. So definitely no joke. The 22 caliber is going to give you a solid 18 foot-pounds of energy, getting your 22 going about 755 feet per second. The Ultimate Springer version we're looking at today is going to have an overall length of 41 inches. Numbers on the Hunter Carbine, which have the shorter barrel, 13 inches, one interesting thing is that the Hunter Carbine is actually going to have a one half UNF threaded muzzle, so you can put a LDC on there. That's going to be putting out 14 foot pounds of energy in 177, shooting your pellet basically 875 feet per second. And in 22 caliber, 17 foot pounds of energy, slinging that baby 700 feet per second. The cheaper stocks are actually made by Manelli and are available in right and left hand variations. The shorter Hunter Carbine is going to come in at just 39 inches overall length. Looks like they're both going to weigh right around 9 pounds. By the way, this is a single shot. Any of you who don't know, you load it by cocking this lever in the front. It opens this giant loading port. You super easily put that pellet in there, slug or whatever you got. And there's actually three different safeties that keep that thing from closing on your finger. So it's never going to happen. It's got a two-stage adjustable trigger, beautiful chrome plated trigger. This trigger is actually world famous as one of the best. And it's definitely backyard friendly. Just a three or a medium on the loudness scale. And it's technically powered by a spring piston. Here's a look again at that beautiful laser etch stippling. Goes all the way around. And then traveling up to the end of the rifle. This is your under lever cocking. It has an ingenious design that allows it to snap firmly into place. And I'm guessing that's a spring loaded ball bearing right there. You just pop your lever open when you want to cock it and snap it shut when you're done. One thing I do love about the TX200, it has an automatic safety, but then it's super easy to flick it off when you're ready to shoot. You just hit it with your thumb like that. Once you take your safety off, you can't put it back on again. We'll go over the operation. Right now though, it's time to get this party started. I did use Ballastol and a pull through cleaning system to clean my barrel, but it wasn't very dirty. First, let's see what kind of speed this bad boy's putting out on some of our favorite pellets. All right, let's see where we hit. What the heck? This thing sighted in already? Well, 664 with our lightest pellet. <laughs> Look at that. Sighted right in. One more for practice. Pretty sweet. This TX200 was so smooth to shoot. There was none of that recoil or jumpiness 
usually associated with springers. Wow, shoot right between these two. It basically felt like a PCP to shoot, but a little more satisfying. Oh my gosh, they're both laying back there. And it performs like a PCP as well. When you guys see the groups that I shot with the Hades, it'll blow your mind. It was so fun shooting this, I got a little bit distracted, but here's those pellet speeds we were talking about. These are the 13.43 grains. It ended up being five shots through two holes. Slipped on the trigger right through the bullseye. I had to actually go to the target to see what was going on. Once I realized it was sailing through the exact same hole. But long story short, I tried some different pellets. Blew away some of these cans. And at the end, I threw some Hades in there. And here's what happened. All right, you guys, I wanna do one more official group with the Hades. All right, I'm gonna keep it sighted in high so I got something to aim at. Look at that, you guys. Excellent group. Those are the JSP Hades. Traveling about 680 feet per second. Let's do one more. All right. Watch this bullseye killer. <laughs> one shot side in with the Hades, baby. All right, you guys, that's five shots with the Hades at 18 yards away, and that's shot number six. The 13.43 grain, we're going about 690 feet per second. The 14.35 grain, we're going about 670. All right, now we're gonna do a 15.89 grain. 680, wow. So heavier pellets don't slow down at all, I like it. All right, now let's look at the 18 grains. Yeah, so 640 on the 18 grains. And then I even tried the 25.39 grain redesigns. They actually shot pretty good, and they were traveling just under 500 feet per second. This TX200 is not pellet picky. Every pellet I tried shot very well. The reason I'm at 18 yards is because that's what my indoor shooting range is, and the weather was so terrible this week that I figured I'd have to do my shooting inside. However, it was pretty quick that I discovered how good the Hades were. So I just stuck with those. But you can rest assured that you'd be able to use a variety of ammo in your TX200, including JSB knockout air gun slugs. <laughs> wow, accurate though. That thing, aimed, that thing hit right where I was aiming. Wow, that thing hits right where you aim with a JSB knockout. The TX200 was so fun to shoot, I couldn't put it down. So I'm not going to show all the plinking that I did. But let's take a look at that awesome trigger. Boy, I'm still hitting the bullseye, but I better get my scope rings a little tighter next time. Just a 3.5 ounce trigger pull. The trigger's definitely super awesome. Very smooth with a clean break. It was too stormy all week to do official groups at longer distances. But if it's shooting them in the same hole at 18 yards, it's obviously going to group well at longer distances. As well, the TX200 has been hitting bullseyes for decades, so we don't need a YouTube video to prove its accuracy. So while official accuracy testing was out of the question, I did set up my own makeshift fill target course. So let's see how it does at fill target distances. The way fill target works is that you go through a course, there may be one or two targets, and they can be anywhere from 15 to I believe 45 or maybe even 60 yards away. And then usually the target will have some sort of a hat on or possibly just an object sitting on its head. And then that object may or may not be wearing a hat of its own and or have an object on its head. So there's someone keeping track of your shots and you first have to shoot the target's hats off. And then obviously you have to shoot the target down. The only way the target will go down is if you hit the center if you hit anywhere around, it'll just bounce off and it won't go down. <laughs> oh, 
direct hit. Well, right down. Direct hit. direct hit. I guess we'll just keep hitting it till it goes down. Dude, you're supposed to like fall down when we hit the middle right there. You're making me look like a weirdo. That's how it's done. And finally we had our target at the 39 yard mark. It did take me a second to figure out where I was hitting. And once I knew where to aim, TX200 was killing it at 40 yards. Nailed in on the first try. Yeah. All right, now that I know where to hold, I should be able to nail this thing easily. Yeah. <laughs> Direct hit in the bullseye. These are actually some antique targets, so I think they needed to be greased. Yeah, baby! All right, everybody, that's it for me on this one. Definitely impressed with the TX200 laminate. I feel like it finally got a stock that it deserves. I know a lot of you are big TX200 fans, so I'm sure that these will be popular. All right, everybody, till next week, happy shooting. We'll see you on the next one.